Hey, what's up, H&M Trucking? It's Marcus. Of course, you recognize the voice by now. I'm just checking in here real quick before we start this episode to let you know about our all-new podcast website. All you got to do is head over to podcast.hmtrucking.com, and you've got a litany of things, uh, a bunch of our favorite episodes. You can check out some of the video there. You can navigate to any episode you want. And there's also some fun stuff there, like some polls. Uh, if you scroll all the way down to the very bottom of the episodes page or the featured playlist page, uh, you can find some contact information down there. And of course, if you're listening to this podcast, but you've never been on before, we actually have a diagram of what to expect if you're coming on the podcast. So uh, it's a really cool website. You definitely got to go check it out today. Again, podcast.hmtrucking.com, and that bad boy is live. So get over there and check it out after you enjoy episode 76 of the H&M Trucking Podcast. From Omaha, Nebraska, to whatever lane you're driving, this is the H&M Trucking Podcast with your host, Marcus Bridges. What's up, everybody, and welcome into the H&M Trucking Podcast. I'm your host, Marcus. Thanks for being here with me today. Episode 76 is a real doozy, and I'm very excited about this episode. Uh, so let's just jump into it today. Recently, one of our guests, uh, one of our upcoming guests on this episode, actually uh, piped up during a meeting, and he said, hey, I kind of want to do an episode of Behind the Pod. Like, what's going on? Who's involved with this thing? I'm always talking about them. I'm always talking about my Audio Ninja mic. I'm always heaping the praise on Eve and Sherry for helping us out uh, with content and getting in touch with drivers. And, of course, I'm always talking about uh, my co-host, Denny, and all of his driving experience. And we thought maybe it would be cool to bring the podcast team on for their own interview. Now, uh, I, I do have to thank them all because while Denny is a broadcaster like myself, everyone else you're going to hear uh, on this upcoming interview is not a broadcaster. They do different things. They are uh, like our media editor. Haley will be joining us. Of course, I already mentioned Audio Ninja Mike, uh, president of the company that I work for. Jackson will be joining us. And we're going to bring in Sherry as well to try to keep us all under wraps because if our business meetings would give you any uh, indication. We don't do a lot of work on the podcast team. We just get to have fun. But all jokes aside, I am bringing on some very hardworking people that are instrumental in this podcast to talk about all the things uh, that you might be questioning about how this whole thing happens. Now, we're not going to specifically take you minute by minute through the production of an episode, but we're going to hear from Mike and Haley about their jobs. We're we'll hear from Denny and, of course, Sherry and Jackson as well um, and talk about their involvement and how we roll this rock up the hill each and every week here on the H&M Trucking Podcast. It's a long conversation. It's a very unique one, and I'm super excited to present to you Episode 76 of the H&M Trucking Podcast, Behind the Pod, with Mike, Haley, Jackson, Sherry, and of course, my illustrious co-host, Denny. Enjoy. All right, Denny, it is fancy. We're sitting here with all of our new technology. I'm so excited about it. Uh, for those of you, look, we should just go ahead and take the take the curtains back right now so that everybody knows this is going to be a very unique episode. It's an episode like we've never done before. We wanted to come in here and give you all a peek behind the curtain on what happens behind the scenes on the H&M Trucking Podcast. And I am in a room right now full of so many more people than we normally ever deal with, Denny. I don't know about you, but as we start adding people to the mix... Uh, my anxiety starts to heighten a little bit. There's really no reason for that. But uh, there's a lot of people here today, and I'm pretty excited about it. Danny, how you feeling? I'm just wondering where everybody is. We're spread out across the country, aren't we? We really are. From from point to point, uh, I am in Oregon. Of course, you are down in Texas, Denny. Um, and let's go ahead and just introduce our guests here. You hear us talk about him all the time on this podcast. We're always very positive about the guy because he makes me and Denny sound way better than we do in real life. 
He is, as referred to on this podcast, our audio ninja, and I'm so happy to have him here today. Please welcome Mike Martin to the podcast. Mike, thank you so much for being here, man. What up, party people? I thought you were talking about Jackson there with how much you were hyping him up, but <laughs> today, I'm the guy behind the headphones that sets what you hear is what I hear also. <laughs> Mike has the unfortunate job of having to listen to me <laughs> hour by hour by hour every single day, every single day of the week. Um, every episode that you've heard, Mike's heard it six times through in, in full. Uh, Denny, uh, do you have anything to say to Mike? He's cleaned both of us up so many times. Like, I feel like we just owe him a thank you because I hear we owe the him magic. A margarita. That... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, never mind. Don't stop it. Don't stop it. Let's go, baby. <laughs> I, I think he owe, you owe him a margarita both for the work he does on the audio and just putting up with me, uh, you know, because Mike, Mike's like my main point of communication. If something goes wrong, Mike and I touch base first, and typically I'm pretty panicky when it so comes I'm gonna, to So I'm going to cut so. you off here, though. I, I think the, the biggest thing about Marcus on this podcast is he's the king of self-deprecation, and you need to stop doing that because you also do a bang-up job, have pride in yourself. Also, go Ravens. Sorry, Niners. So <laughs> it's all right. Just, I gotta it's get my right. gotta get my tidbit in. No, you should. And uh, and and listen, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, coming from you, that means a lot. Because if anything, I would have thought that you'd be sick of me a long time ago, Mike. Oh, so uh, <laughs> I didn't say it. don't 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 go too far there. But okay, okay. all right. Of people all right. That so please. <laughs> So uh, we'll get back to what Mike's day-to-day -day looks like here in just a minute, but we've got other people here that I want to introduce real quick. Joining us for her very first podcast appearance ever is media editor Haley Moreland. Haley, thank you so much for being here. Glad to have you. Oh, thank you so much, Marcus. Good are you uh, excited for your first ever podcast experience, or are you just ready for this to be over already? A little bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be weird. I don't want to edit myself. Oh, you're going to have to now. I'm fine just staring at you and Danny, listening to you guys, you know, a couple hours a day at least, but myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine having Mike's job. You get out of it after a couple hours a day. Mike's just in the weeds all the time. So well, We're booked for like four hours of this recording today, right? At least. So I was okay, thinking fantastic. five. Yeah. Phenomenal. <laughs> you didn't have anything else you needed to do today, right, Haley? <laughs> No, you're good. Okay, no. perfect. We're here. Uh, well, well, thank you for being here. Also joining us today, we have a vet of the podcast. She is a recruiting specialist for H and M Trucking, and very instrumental in the things that go on in this podcast every single day. Sherry Vogler, welcome back to the show. Glad to have you as always. Good to be back. Now, from your perspective. Are we just a little bit of like a ragtag group that kind of you don't know what's going to come out and it's like it's a surprise every time we give you something? Because as you sit here and you see how we operate, like this has kind of been just like a meeting for us. We get into the meeting and it's five, ten minutes before anything gets said that actually has to do with work, Sherry. So um, now that you've kind of met the crew, what's your what's what, what's going through your head? What's your thought process? What do you think of us? I mean, I think you're all amazing. You're like my type of people. Like, I love it. <laughs> you heard margarita earlier, and you're like, yes, let's get some right. margaritas. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's what I heard. <laughs> well, uh, we're all peas in a pod here, and uh, as I said, share everybody that you're going to hear in this episode today has a very instrumental part to play in this podcast. It would not happen. It would not sound as good as it does. It would not look as good as it does if all of these people weren't involved that we've just met here. Uh, and and Sherry, uh, I, I think sometimes you go as an unsung hero on this podcast. There's a lot of times where if Sherry wasn't around, uh, you'd just be listening to mine and Denny's musings. And I yep. can't speak for what goes on between Denny's ears, but it's a, it's a circus up here in my head. So uh, thank you, Sherry, for being here today. Thank you for providing us with all of the great content that you do. And now that we've talked about all the people that are instrumental and have a lot to do with this podcast, <laughs> let's get to the president of the great company that puts it on. He's the president of Bulldog Solutions, which is the company that myself, Denny, Mike, and Haley all work for. Please welcome to the show Mr. Jackson Thompson for his first podcast appearance. Uh, Jackson, we're, we're really glad to have you here. Uh, I just hope you're not taking notes. No, um, I'm super stoked. I, you know, everything you said about Sherry has been 110% uh, true. 
I mostly, you know, as you know, work behind the scenes and just work with Sherry. She lines up cool people for you guys to talk to. But I've been excited to, to come on. Uh, you know, we actually had a conversation a couple of weeks ago about the idea. And then I finally found an excuse with you, Marcus, to figure it out. And thankfully, Eve said this was cool. So I'm um, happy to be here and happy to finally, like, get to be a part of the stuff that I listen to every week. So. Sherry, did you get the feeling when Jackson was drumming up this idea that he was just trying to figure out a way to get on the podcast? Uh, I mean, just a little. It's fine. Just... <laughs> it's fine. I think he deserves it. Thank you. I, no, I, I do, mean, too. Like, I do, too. You just have so much fun. And I was just kind of, it was like major FOMO, right? Like every week something fun happens. You have some cool segments. Like especially like when recruiting gets involved, that's when it gets real crazy. So I was like, okay, like, if we're going to have Sherry on, like this will be really so we should have you on next time recruiting is on. Oh, that would be a blast. Right, because we embarrass you daily. Uh, it's great. <laughs> did you know, did you, do you know about Ashley's nickname for me? No. You haven't heard that? No, what is it? Um, so I learned, and I don't, I, I don't want to take control of the episode, Mark, so you got some plans. I don't want to, I'm a guest today, right? I'm a guest. Yeah, but I if I know. muted you, I'd have to mute Sherry too, so continue. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, so I'm going to share this real quick because I learned it. And then you, next time that Ashley from Benefits is on, you can ask her about this. But I learned that for people that frequent Eve's office, Ashley, being the office next door, sees all those people walk in and out. Or they don't find Eve in her office, so they go over to Ashley and say, hey, where's Eve? She has nicknames for those most frequent guests. Ryan's is the tall one. James is the medium one. And can you guess what mine is? It's not going to be oh. the between medium and tall one, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't know. I am the little one, uh, which I actually really love. So um, The little one? She couldn't call you the short one? Little just no. makes it sound like you're a kid. The it, 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 I'm, I'm going to petition for you. I'm going to change your name to Short King. I, I got told Short <laughs> King. I think that's what Drew said. That's what Tanya said, so I'll learn it. But, yeah, so I'm the little one. Well, Isn't that fun? I, Look, it is, and I, I have to tip my cap to you, Jackson, because if it wasn't for you, I would be the short one in this company. I know that. I am a very short American. You have handled that role very well, and you keep me from uh, making fun of myself for being short, because now I have you. I embrace it. What, so. what are we talking eye-wise here? Just just out of curiosity. We got numbers? Wise, yeah. For me, I'm a, I'm a 5'9". I'm dead in the middle, right in the middle just of the curious. bell curve. Jackson, how tall are you? You got a little one. <laughs> Shoes or no shoes? <laughs> the shoes that you heighten with, the ones that you put on mm. when you're really trying to make a statement. It's a good you day. Dude, those used to be so Heelys. You remember? You remember <laughs> like the the roller skate So okay, so hear me out. So Heelys have that really thick sole, and then the wheel yeah. goes in there. And if you wear that to an amusement park, yeah. you add like three inches, <laughs> four inches. So I used to because I couldn't get on the roller coaster i would put in the wheels right before i got to the height checker and then i'd pop them out put them in my mom's purse so i got like an extra like couple <laughs> inches because of the wheel and the clearance for the wheel you're um, too young you missed the 70s and platform shoes man yeah. right. oh that would have been awesome like <laughs> there is just yeah there is nothing that screams short king like also being on wheels i mean that is <laughs> hey ben you, you go shopping with your mom and you fly down the aisle at that Baker's or that Kroger. There is no better feeling, man. Tell me you still have some. No. I've been, oh, I still make I Surprisingly, I grew up. Oh, so oh, they're too, too uh, small now. I don't even know if my mom still has them. But no, so to answer your question, Mike, 5'5 five, five, without shoes, 5'6 with shoes. Ah. As someone that, I, 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 I mean, quick side story, because that's what we're built for today, apparently. Way back when, when I got my driver's license when I was 16, I I told the person sitting behind the counter at the DMV that I was 6'2". I'm not. I'm a quality six foot-ish. So, on my, on my driver's license for about four or five years, I was 6'2 on there. Nice. And I bet you that felt good for those two, for those oh, couple of years. Yeah. Like, 6'2 is just, it's different than six foot. I don't know why. It's just maybe 6'2, 250, like an NFL linebacker. Like that's what you were thinking, right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> 
So let's get into talking a little bit about the day-to-day here of the podcast. For those of you that that have listened to this podcast for 70-plus episodes, it, you might really have no idea how we put this thing together. Um, it, it's pretty simple. It starts typically with an idea from Sherry, and we say, okay, who do we want to talk to? And we get together, and Denny and I will will schedule these, and we'll send out the invites, and then we'll all kind of end up just in a room like this. Now, a lot of times I have a bunch of questions prepared. I have statements. Sometimes I'll even write jokes. Denny will have a bunch of homework done as well. Um, I didn't do squat for this episode. Kind of put it all on you guys. So I hope you can bring the heat when we start talking about the day-to-day. Mike, I am going to start with you here because you're in it so much, man. Sure. Um, what is the editing process like for Denny and myself and all of the other people that we bring on this podcast? How intensive is it? How many times will you listen to a, a segment before it's final and you actually get to crank it out? Talk us through this a little bit. Sure, sure. If it's just a Marcus uh, recording, then it's going to be probably longer than if it was a driver interview or something like that because you just... just take so long in what you do and just make it so intensive. But look, every driver we have on, everything like that, it's so smooth. No, um, it is, it's, <laughs> it's an intense process because we're dealing with audio coming from people that are in their trucks every day. People that are chiming in with are hanging out at home. And my goal is to make sure that the conversation lines up to sound almost seamless so that the, the driver is comfortable and anybody that calls into the show that we do makes it a comfortable experience for them whether they're a repeat or just their first time calling in. And that is my end goal is to make sure that what they hear, they would say, heck yeah, I sounded like that today. So I go through the process of enhancing the audio. I cut out the the, the long pauses and the ums and can I restart that and what have you. And I know it's small things, but I think it allows the people that join the podcast to feel comfortable wanting to either come back or join for the first time and it's it it makes me happy knowing i haven't really gotten pushback from a driver thus far unless we're missing emails or something like that that it makes me happy that what we've put out there shows just a quality product for them to listen to and also be comfortable in in injecting situation of being comfortable listening to yourself and not worrying about jumping on the pod that's that's my end goal is comfortability and also being like, oh, I sound that good today. All right, <laughs> dude, I can speak from experience. And Denny, I know you probably feel the same. If you've listened to some of these episodes after Mike polishes them and puts and we we release them, I will get uh, an inflated sense of self worth. You guys talk to me about being a little bit self deprecating. It's because Mike makes me sound so good that I think I'm better at what I do than what I am. And I know that for a fact, Denny. Have you ever listened back and been like, man, I was really smooth there, and then gone and listened to the raw cut to kind of compare the two and see the kind of work Mike does? No, I'm too lazy for that. I'm also very <laughs> trusting. <Dude. laughs> hey, Denny, and retired. you're trusting? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, you do a great job, Mike. I, I have to ask you this. Out of all the people on the podcast, and I know what the answer is going to be, Who's the worst offender as far as um and uh and uh, non sequiturs like that, dude? Do you do you keep a do you keep a mirror in front of yourself when you're asking I'm looking that question? at myself right now? <laughs> Just making yep. sure. Yep. It's, uh, I know it's, it's actually a small trick that I do is I keep the ums and uhs sometimes that you put in there to make people feel comfortable jumping on the pod knowing they can make those mistakes, but I just keep yours in. Okay, that's fine. And I should be the one. I should be the one. If anybody's going to look bad here, let it be me. And speaking of the way this podcast looks, now I'm going to turn it over to Haley, our media editor, who, uh, Haley, your job different from Mike's because you're working with the video. And by the way, perfect, awesome work on all of the YouTube videos. You're not only doing video editing for this podcast. You do the shorts and things like that that everybody sees on H&M Trucking's YouTube page. Talk to me a little bit about your day-to-day and and how you fit in with our whole podcast team here. Oh, well, first off, thank you so much, Marcus. I appreciate you. Let's see. Mike does a lot of the hard work, you know, putting her all together. He sends me the file. I make it look like it does on the YouTube. Shorts are fun, too. Yeah, no. Well, I've always noticed you have the perfect sense of humor for the shorts. I, like, I want to be an internet kid, 
but I don't the the humor and all of the trends and everything. I don't have enough bandwidth upstairs to keep up with it. And every time I see one of your shorts, I think it's like Haley's just got her finger on the pulse. She knows exactly what's trending. She's you're always right on with that. Is it hard for you to keep up with that? Is that like an active thing that you have to constantly be pressuring yeah. yourself to find out what these trends are, or are you just a part of the generation that that's just that's your everyday life? You know it without having to try. Oh, good question, Marcus. I'm gonna say a little bit of both. It's it's a blessing and a curse that like Gen Z lived on the internet, but also I'm trying to make things that you know maybe Denny might find funny. So I gotta kind of bridge that gap. So I appreciate <laughs> you. Yes, it gives me great joy when a trucker, you know, or one of our drivers loves a short or an episode or something on the YouTube that I did. That's amazing. Well, connect with the old farts is what she's trying to say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you can call him an old fart. We pay him to be here, you know? You can say that to him. <laughs> no. It's so, classic. I, I will ask, too, uh, there's been a couple of times when I've worn, uh, you know, if, if you're watching this on YouTube right now, which you might understand if you've had any experience video editing or anything, is it the backgrounds behind Denny and I don't look like what they look like after Haley gets her hands on them. This is just a green blanket behind me. It's very boring. Uh, but there have been a couple of times, if I'm not mistaken, Haley, where I've accidentally blended into or stood out way too much, right? There was once when I wore a red shirt that you guys were like, can you just never do that again? Like, do you remember that one? Oh, absolutely. I think I have a list, actually, of things I prefer Marcus never wear. Well, oh. the cool ones. Yeah. Red green. shirts up on top of that. Yeah, green. Red shirt yeah, and green. Those yeah, are really right. Ones. I thought about coming on here once, just fully ducked out in all of my green gear, just to see if you would just get like a beard, you know, uh, in your in your video. So I might try that. Maybe an April Fool's episode or something. You might see something funny come across Whoa. like that. Do you guys have one of those? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we do now, Sherry. Well, now, well, add that one to April. There you go. Yeah. So from a, uh, from a, what do I want to say here? I, I guess I could say like an executive standpoint because Sherry and Jackson, I feel like you guys are kind of the executive producers of the podcast here. We, uh, you know, we're, we're looking to you guys for advice. Jackson, as much as I hate to admit it, I use you a lot of days like my own personal uh, uh, prodding ram. Like I would just send you out into the H&M office regardless of what kind of day they're having to just go bug people for me. Um, but I did say way back when we started this ep or this podcast, 70 some odd episodes ago, I said, give us enough time and we'll be insidious. Meaning that if you just keep putting us in front of everybody at H and M sooner or later, they'll like us out of necessity. Do you guys think over there at the H and M office that we're finally in, like I've finally got my foot in the door. Are they finally liking us? Or do you guys still get eye rolls and deep sighs when you come by asking for interviews and things like that? I don't like the look they're giving each other. Right I now. don't either. <laughs> I don't either. You go first. I am the worst person to ask this question to because I am very in your face when it comes to that. Like I'm pretty much like, Hey, we need you for a podcast. I voted you lost. Get a whole market. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of how I do things. <laughs> you know, I'm pretty much, yeah, we're going to do this. And, you know, I don't really give them time to think about it. So, <laughs> but I think now it's easier. I think yeah. after we've been doing this for a while, like you're here and I'm here all the time. So I think that the first initial, we got a lot of kind of pushback, but I think now like people are a little bit more open to it. I agree. Jackson, what would you have to say? I mean, look, you, I, Sherry does take that approach, which I love. It's like, it's not really a question as to whether or not you'll come on the podcast. You're going on the podcast and you're going to have to fight with Sherry if you don't like it. I don't feel like I can, I can pack that weight around because they don't know me and I'm trying to build like a relationship, you know, Jackson, I just kind of shove you out into the fire every now and then. Um, do you get the eye rolls? Are you getting the heavy size? Are you thinking we're starting to kind of build up a little bit of momentum over there in the H&M office? I think part of my answer would probably be to share some context with the audience on what I do in the office. 
So for context, I'm the only Bulldog employee that sits in the office at H&M. Bulldog is co-owned by James Fonda and his business partner, Grant Stanley. So I'm Omaha-based. We have a bunch of folks on the Bulldog team like Mike and Haley and Marcus and now Denny who are not Omaha-based. We primarily operate remotely on Zoom. For anybody that's listening who's a driver or somebody in the office who I haven't met yet, come on way to the back. I sit way past safety. I'm always either I'm on a meeting or I'm walking around bothering people, but you'll find me probably somewhere between those two points. And so for me, like, I think when I started at Bulldog again in November, the podcast wasn't something that was super popular. I think when we sat down for a conversation over dinner with Sherry to ask Sherry to help us out with the podcast, that has been instrumental. So thank you for that. I think Sherry has been a cheerleader for the podcast, has been super helpful. And sometimes, you know, hey, we voted, I voted, you lost kind of thing, right? But at (laughs) at the same time, I think being around, talking about it, having Sherry as an advocate for it has really helped. And I would also give a tip to the cap to leadership, right? So our Brian and Ryan episode, having those two on, Brenda Hampton who comes on, Eve, whatever we need her, the sheriff comes on, we got Lindsay from the bands on, like we're getting more people. And so I would say slowly but surely it's been better. I also think too, we're getting in front of more drivers every week, right? So we talk about it in orientation. It's come to be something that new drivers know as, okay, I'm joining H&M. They do a podcast. This is what it's about. This is why it's important. And then I, I would say we've done some t-shirts. Those haven't hurt. Tim S over at JFL, he wears that H&M podcast shirt every day. He washes it every day and then he puts it back on every day. And so when he sends down making calls, you can see the logo on the back, like everybody sees it. So I would say overall, definitely, I think we're getting more participation. And as I've gotten to know more people in the office and get more comfortable, I can kind of call in some more favors. So a little bit of both. Long-winded answer to your short question. Yeah, we've been giving out t-shirts in orientation. So like when I go in and talk to the new drivers about the podcast, I make them all say stay fresh cheese bags in unison so they can get a free t-shirt. So I have have yet to get mine, you know. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Denny there, he's he's starting to get uh, feel a little bit left out because he doesn't you have an H and M podcast shirt yet. Denny, what size T shirt do you need? Extra, extra large. I'm a big okay. old. We got you. I got you. Um, Thank you. I had no idea. No, well, I appreciate you bringing that up. We'll get you one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been a couple of years since I retired, so my H and M stuff's getting a little old and worn. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna get you some new now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think in the future we want to do more merch. You know, it's it's just kind of. I think it's fun. Yes, it's been fun, and I also think too, like, and I'll give a hats off to to Denny, Marcus, and Mike as well. Like, I think the podcast, the content is getting better, right? You're developing rapport with some of the folks in the office. We're developing segments where we can check in, like sneak peek. We have a freight market episode coming up here in a couple of weeks. Like, there's things we've done to improve the quality. We're using a new platform now for recording, which is going great. So. I think in, in tandem, right, you're getting a lot more engagement, but you're also getting a better product that's getting put out. And then feedback from drivers too. Drivers have been awesome and coming on and helping out. And uh, we get guests like Tom Woods who are always in for a treat, right? Tom's always a blast. So we get a, we get a lot of good characters on the podcast, which helps. And even phone calls from drivers that have listened and I've had guys come into orientation that said, oh yeah, I found your podcast. It's really good. So before I even tell them, they know it's there. So that's kind of cool. It's a That's shout out awesome. to the, the the topics that we talk about on the podcast too. Is it's not just a one hundred and one version of trucking. You we've dove into topics like mental health and things that are just you know basics of trucking. It's it's digging deeper into how the business works and how these people and our friends survive and live their lives. And I think it's it's great that we're able to put out that kind of product versus just the basics. So right. it's real. Absolutely. It, it, yeah, it's real and and you know heartfelt. You know that's what I tell the drivers when they come in. I said it's it's something that you should listen to because we're not just like a oh we love H and M trucking come to H and M trucking type of podcast. Like we really deal with issues that are important to the drivers and try to listen to them and the stuff that they're dealing with every day. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That. And you know, Denny, I I think of you when we talk about this part of it because. You are just like me. You're a former broadcaster, and I think that everybody that has done broadcasting in some way, shape, or form has a bit of that chameleon in them, in that it doesn't matter what gets brought up. It doesn't matter who I'm talking to. I need to be able to talk to them. I need to be able to talk about the subject. You have combined that on this podcast with your extensive knowledge of trucking 
And it's made it so much easier on me because there's a lot of times when I've got a trucking question and I'm worried about sounding stupid. And I can ask you, Denny, and I don't <laughs> sound stupid because you're the co-host. You're supposed to know this stuff. So, uh, you know, when you talk about getting a little bit deeper and, and delving into some of these topics that are trucking uh, adjacent, not necessarily trucking right down the middle, uh, it, it takes a village. And I've said that on this podcast so many times. It takes all the people behind the scenes. But, Denny, having you here for these last uh, however many 30-plus episodes that you've been here, man, has really brought this podcast into a whole new generation of the stuff that we can talk about. And I don't want to leave that out uh, when we are having this conversation because you're a huge addition to it, man. And and it's been a lot of fun having you here. I hope it's been as much fun for you. Oh, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> I, I didn't mean to. <laughs> well, back to what you were saying about being a broadcaster, I'm doing interviews in radio it was easy because you know your singer would come on or promoter would come on they had their agenda they knew what they were going to say you basically just had to open the mic and let them let them spew this is this is a little more fun because we get to go into in depth more so yeah it's it's different than broadcasting but i, I get what you're saying yeah absolutely well in in just having like you say those in-depth conversations i think that's a big part about uh, you know, being insidious, like I talked about, and getting the people that don't want to come on the podcast to eventually come on. Hey, we're not we're not breaking this down into a five minute sound clip. Like it's not Fox News. We don't just want the highlights. We want the entire conversation. And yeah, I mean, ask Mike. Sometimes it slows down. I imagine there's probably a few days where Mike's got his face just mashed into his <laughs> fist, hoping that the segment will end. I get it. That's kind of podcasting in a nutshell. And Mike, you have a ton of experience in podcasting in general there is a more conversational more open-ended feel to it very much so very much so that's what that's what makes it great when you, we invite people onto the show is it's not an interview as if you're going into some sort of debate or anything like that it's it's a conversation you're walking in having a conversation with people and that's what allows it to be genuine and that's what i think really has grown organically with the H&M podcast is we're talking to people organically and having these just natural conversations versus what's your viewpoint of this? What's your viewpoint of that? It's, you know, where are you at? Where are you at it? You say that so often and it just creates that general conversation with somebody that they want to talk about th their day to day. And then it grows into whatever the topic is that day. So again, kudos to you as a host, but also just how the podcast has grown in general. Yeah, we're 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 getting older. We're maturing for sure. I can feel it. Uh, I just turned forty the other day. Let's not talk about it. Um, you turned moving. what? <laughs> uh, how old? How old? Yeah, yeah. See, see what happens. So let me yourself? straighten my hat. Make sure I still look good here. All right, I got a little oh. bit of gray coming in, but don't worry about it. I, I do want to ask you guys some questions now, and and kind of leave it open ended here. Uh, and Haley, I'm going to start down here with you and. Do you remember, like, are there any times where you just kind of shook your head or you were just kind of blown away by the things that were on the podcast or really any days where it's just like just shaking your head about the things that we're getting into? Anything like that that you might have a story you can share with us from your work experience here on the podcast uh, that might be fun or funny? I'm kind of putting you on the spot here. And I'm the reason I'm droning on about this is I want to give you some time to think. So I'm just putting extra words into the air right now. Mike will get them out later. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. <laughs> oh, top of my head, I don't have a great one, but I do have one story. Let's see. No, I don't. No, I don't. Never mind. Okay, that's all right. It's Hey, if we're not providing you, like, hair-pulling-out moments, it's actually something that kind of uh, lends a little bit more legitimacy to the podcast. There we, go. we might not always sound like it, but we are professionals here. We are trying to do a good job and not make Haley's day any longer. Um, Mike, how about you, man? I know that yeah. you've got stories. Well, I mean, I, I think, again, I'm just going to bring it back to how the, the podcast has grown. When we first started doing the podcast, everything was very – it had, I don't want to say a full script to how we did it, but it was much more linear of how we wanted every episode to go. And this is back to the unplugged OTR days that we had even further. And to to see the progression being Marcus is going into the view and he's going to talk about this or that with the trucker and know that the, the interview is going to go fluid 
versus us being way back when talking about, well, we're going to talk about eating on the road and we're going to bring up these 16 points and we had these bullet points of what we wanted to make sure we did attack to where we are now of being able to just talk to someone and know that we're going to get responses and conversation out of it, I think is just showing the whole growth of what we've done over the past 75 episodes, personally. There's also been Buckwild interviews that you've <laughs> talked about. If... <laughs> We haven't gotten a full interview cut yet. We've still, we're still on, we're batting a thousand. Every interview that we've done, if, unless we've had a technical difficulty, has made the air. Which, right. if you would have, if you would have told me that day one, you'll be 75 episodes in and you will have had every interview make the air, I would have laughed in your face, Sherry, because I, how close have we come? Because Mike hears it all unedited. Denny and I obviously hear it unedited. Sherry, how close have we come to not making air with uh, with certain bits or certain things that we've done on the podcast? Did we toe the line ever? No, I mean, I figured that's why you had me uh, reviewing them because, you know, I like to step over that line most days. But, um, <laughs> um, no, I mean, there's been just a couple, like, I mean, what was the one where we, Jackson and I had the conversation about how many F-bombs are too many F-bombs? What was that? Who was that? Yes. <laughs> And I think we settled on 13 was the number. Yeah, it was like, some, like a weird number. <laughs> Who was your guest for that one? I can't remember. Uh, I think it was Eve. Was it Tom? I, mean, I don't know. When I listen to it, my favorite are actually the ones where James gets on. And there's sometimes no filter for him. And you'll get a couple F-bombs. You'll get some bad words. You'll get some stuff. And he's like, uh, maybe we want to edit that out in folks. So no, those okay. are my favorite. And when that happens, I love it. Because I feel like... I, this is one of the times that I get to feel like a truck driver because I feel like if James was was talking like that to a driver, that's how he would be talking. He would not be editing himself. He would not be censoring himself. And it makes me feel like, all right, great. This is like I'm getting true 100% raw, unfiltered James right now. And I love that. I mean, he's, you know, he's got a he's got a lot on his plate. So to get that out of him is, is a, I feel like, an accomplishment in and of itself. No, I agree. I usually feel like I should edit myself because I'm usually the one that does things I shouldn't. <laughs> For that that story about the uh, the guy who failed the drug test because of the what did we say? What did we call that? Uh, he, he had Why cocaine snorted off an appendage. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was another one that when I was listening. To that See, one, it was memorable. Was we both one. remembered that. <laughs> I don't know what Eve's gonna think of this one, but we'll send it through. <laughs> It's a, and it got through, and only because we were creative. It, it, did you ever think, Sherry, that we would have a conversation about how to word that in a way that HR will kind of just pass it on? I mean, that's... <laughs> Trying to figure out how to word that <laughs> so it made sense. Oh, yeah. Without it being, it like, you know, terrible. Sherry and I in a lab with like beakers and Bunsen burners all around <laughs> and three th thesauruses just trying to figure it out and put it together. But we did it, um, and, and and that's kind of testament to this podcast in general. We've always figured it out, and uh, without this team of people here, like this, I feel like a lot of times I get the credit because I'm the guy. You, I'm the guy you hear. I'm the guy you see. Uh, this is this is like this much me and way more everybody else here, and that's one of the reasons that we wanted to have this behind the pod episode to just give people a little bit of an idea. Uh, of how we put this whole thing together and how many people's hard work and dedication goes into it um, on both the H&M side and the Bulldog side alike. Um, but now, because we're kind of getting towards the end of the interview here, and I, I, I want to open this up to you guys, Mike, Sherry, Jackson, Haley. It's open season for you. Are there any questions floating around in your head that you've wanted to ask Denny and I, be them appropriate or inappropriate, as we all know that this will cross Sherry's desk again before it makes uh, before it makes the air. But, yeah, it just kind of open season for Denny and I. I mean, is there anything floating through? I can already tell, by the way, Sherry's laughing that she's got, like, a couple humdingers on board. So, no, <laughs> no, anything? Jackson, I know you've got questions. Like, you oh my signed gosh, my paychecks, man. Going. There's got to be a question in there. Well, you guys are thinking too. I can always I kick it to think. Denny because he's think? a true broadcast professional. I'm sure he's got something that he's been sitting on waiting to say during this little interview. Uh, the thing that sticks out to me is you're talking about um, Sherry going through the H&M headquarters there and trying to get people on and how she's successful. It's because she's got like 10 kids. 
She's used to bossing people around. I don't have 10 kids. That's Eve. Eve has 10 That's kids. Eve. Okay. She trained, yeah, she trained under Eve them. on how to boss around people, I think. That's what, I only right? went less than after two. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I, I think claim old man can't though. remember shit now. <laughs> it's okay, Denny. It's okay, man. I'm there too. Okay, so this is gonna be this is actually gonna be for you guys, and then you tell us, then I think we'll have some homework. Okay. What are what is a topic that we haven't broached yet that we can help bring someone to the table to help you guys talk about? And or who are some folks that you haven't gotten on the podcast yet that Denny from your time at H and M you remember, or Marcus you've heard us talk about that you really want to see? Who can we kind of call out like ice bucket challenge if you guys remember that for the next people to come on the pod? And what do we talk about? Can okay, we do that? We can do an ice bucket challenge. We can do that. See, we can call somebody out. I mean, that was a that was like 2014 when I made a video right. with my friends. It's on tape. I haven't seen Jackson do that before, so I need to see that in my life. So it's on the sand. Actually, you just have to go far enough. Yeah. So what do you, Denny, Marcus? What do you guys think? Denny, I'm going to need to get Miss Ellen on, but you're going to have to have the sensor button handy miss ellen had i think three million miles with h&m before she retired not too long before i retired and she's a character i think and that could she could fit into a what i've wanted to do i think it happened before i came on board but a female trucker episode to talk about the challenges of being a lady on the road with the disrespect you get and with the facilities lacking. And I mean, I, I'm not a, I'm not a lady. I'm not a girl. So I don't know, but I know for instance, uh, uh, little America, that's one thing I heard from all the female drivers is they love to stop there because they had tubs, they had bathtubs so they could soak instead of having to take a shower, but things like that, that, you know, as I, I wouldn't know. So that's something I, I would like to, to bring to the table. I love that I mean, idea. She would be great. She's so nice. She's so fun. And we had a great, the last episode that we did that was about the women of H&M Trucking, uh, we had a couple of the uh, lady drivers join us, and we talked to some people from the office there, and it's a great episode, and I'd love to do another one. And, and Jackson, I'm just going to piggyback off of that and say, to answer your question, I would like to, I would like there to be a day where there's not an employee within the four walls of the H&M terminal that hasn't been on the podcast. That's what I would like. I would like to eventually, when you look out among all the faces in there, I would like to see less faces that have not done the podcast than what have. Because every single time you guys bring us somebody new, it's always great. You know, I, I mean, we talked to Ashley from accounting. She's already been brought up. She's the one that gave you the nicknames. Um, I, I had talked to Ashley, very limited, had like a couple back and forth emails with her, had never spoken to her on the phone. She came on this podcast so prepared to talk about stuff that's in depth and like accounting things that, that has technical things that have rules all around them. She knocked it out of the park. It was phenomenal. And I feel like that's every time we turn over a new stone at H&M, we find a new like exotic bug. It's like, oh my God, this thing is amazing. We have to have it back on the podcast again. So that's my answer. My long answer to your short question there, Jackson, is whoever. I, we The doors really are open. I don't think we've ever turned down anyone that's wanted to come on this podcast before. That's another cool part about it. Can we, come back to the beginning, we were talking about this margaritas. Can we do a podcast after dark episode? Ooh, Ooh happy hour style? Fun. Yeah. Ooh. I like happy that. Happy hour I, style. I like my, that too. My time, I'm not, not going to have to drive work. anywhere, so I'd be good for that. Yeah, exactly. I got uh, As long as I can make it down the stairs, I can stay up here and drink for hours on end. Like, In let's, fact, it's almost time for Dawn. She, every year around holiday season, she makes homemade Kahlua. Oh, Man. nice. Ooh. When we were in Tennessee, she used real moonshine, but now she uses Everclear. So her Kahlua is a lot stronger than what you buy in the store. I like it. I have got to get on that mailing list. Uh, Haley and Mike want to give you guys the opportunity here. Um, any questions for us? I mean, you guys, you see the product day in and day out. Uh, you're always dealing with all of the quirks and, and the ways that I work and, and whether or not it works for you. You guys always work around it, and I appreciate that. But is there anything that comes to mind for Denny or me that you might uh, – you're thinking like, dude, if I could just ask this guy and get him to stop acting like an idiot X, Y, Z times – Anything like that? Like, I feel like you guys are giving me way too much credit here. Like, 
Mike's got something right now. I can see it. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a Jenny question more than anything. He's Jenny's been on the road for a long time, and we got we got the the Big Rick's Cafe. And I'm curious what your favorite dish that you would make on the road that you still make at home is. Actually, Good question. I, actually, nachos. It's I mean nice. there are more dishes that that are tastier, but that was I probably eat nachos at least two or three times a week when I was on the road because after a long day it's easy. I mean it's easy and fast. What's and the worst dish you've ever made, Marcus? Sorry, what's the worst dish I've ever made? <laughs> I'm just curious for a friend. Oh man, I have. How many f bombs are we? We haven't had any. I have fucked some stuff up in the kitchen, Mike. Uh, to be honest with you, who's making sure? Um, I hope it you are human. An antelope. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't mess up the antelope because I wouldn't allow myself to talk to you guys if I did. I would sequ. I would. That's like, can you exile yourself? Like, to, I would just exile myself into an, a shed out back, and I wouldn't talk to anybody ever again if I messed up the antelope. But um, I have. I made some pot stickers one time, and I didn't know that you couldn't reheat those with the pot sticker sauce. And I reheated those in a public microwave with the pot sticker sauce, and made the whole floor smell like broccoli and skunks. Stop and it. I didn't make that, but technically I made it. So I'm gonna go with that one because I got. I've only been written up at work a couple of times, and one of them was for those goddamn pot stickers. And I didn't think that was possible. I was just trying to get sustenance in my body, but instead I cleared out a whole floor. So. Best enough. There you go. I mean, I lit my stove on fire when I first got married, so I, you know, I feel you. How, what'd your husband have to say? You said you first got married. Was he like, hey, uh, I don't want to start this marriage off on the stoves on fire foot. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that I was going to be fancy and make a blooming onion. And so I bought like the onion slicer and all the stuff and what you heated up my oil. But what I didn't realize is when you drop the onion in the oil, you have to give it room and it like pour it out of the top of the pot and let the whole top of my stove on fire. And I, he was in the field. So I called my mom and asked, what do I do? And she's like, throw flour on it. So that's what I did. That's the Not same water mistake people make spot. trying to fry a turkey in the South. <laughs> yep. They yep. catch the whole yard on fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. or in the case of oregon uh the entire state because we well, that's yeah. honestly yeah. like it's a tinder box over here um that's interesting I, I I, we might I just have to have it up north did fried turkeys yeah well we tried i smoked it last year i i kind of took a, a page out of the south denny and that i didn't care about how the health benefits of the turkey and so instead of trying to fry this one i filled it out i pumped it full of melted butter and maple syrup it was basically a lollipop when it was all said and done, but it was a delicious lollipop. Um, yeah, I, I had to get back on diabetes medication right after Thanksgiving last year. But again, a story for another time. Haley, we haven't given you the chance yet. Any any burning questions for us? Yes. No, I thought of it finally. Okay. Marcus, I don't have any questions for you. I talk to you like every day. I'm sorry. Yep. Yep. <laughs> sorry. Perfect. Um, Penny... So you've done a couple where not to drive this weekend, this week, uh, segments, and quite a few of them have been for bike week, bike events. Do you, did you ride, you sound like you have been to a few when you speak of them. Have you had a bike before, motorcycle? Oh, you? many, many years. I finally well, sold my last bike while I was still driving for H&M because... The last five years I owned that motorcycle, I bet I didn't put 300 miles on it. Because when I went home, I didn't want to go anywhere. So I well, finally I'm... sold it and actually bought a a Mini Cooper convertible. And I love it because it, like the motorcycle, I can put the top down and have the wind in my hair. And I can still take luggage and stay for the weekend without having to strap everything down. So I kind of transitioned to that. Um, not saying I won't ever own another one, but I'm happy with what I got now. That sounds really nice. One last question. What color is it? Red. What other color? All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like to pass myself off as the adventurous one on this podcast. I am the only one uh, that's a normal host of this podcast that isn't retired. And I'm also the only one that doesn't have any hair on the top of my head that could, that could blow through the breeze like that. And every time Denny tells me about cruising around in his convertible, I think how nice it must be 
to be at your age, Denny, and still have the head of hair that you do, man. I'll never know what that's like. That's something you're going to have over me, that and the, the beautiful beard for for your entire mm-hmm. life, man. No, well, it's, it's I mean, thin I on see top, you. but it's still there. Yeah, well, mine's gone. Mine looks like a crop circle, like, you know, in the fields in the 90s when they thought that... and oh, they like would, that the monk aliens, haircut thing. Yeah, kind of, except for my barber was blind. Um, I'm trying not to be self-deprecating, but really, that's my life. It's like, you look at yourself in the mirror enough, you have to talk shit about somebody, and I'm the one staring back at me right now. So I'm trying to put the brakes on it a little bit. We do need to wrap this up because we're, I mean, could you guys believe it? We've already been talking for almost 50 minutes at this point. Uh, that's what happens on this podcast. It's it, I, I like getting some behind the scenes folks in on it because Mike, I know, gets it. He's listened to enough of our conversations in first person, but uh, it's hard sometimes to put the to put the wraps on it and even make it a 30 minute segment. We talk about we're not going for five minute clips here. Sometimes I just wish that we didn't have so much more to talk about that we had to cut or we didn't have to cut people off. But um, let's go Room ahead. Room for part two, baby. Room for part two. That's true. That's true. And that's why Mike is so valuable. He's always thinking about the next episode. And uh, room for part two is the way to go for sure. But before we go, I do want to give everybody a chance for some final thoughts here. Uh, Jackson and Sherry, uh, real quick, just from me, I just want to say thank you guys. Uh, All jokes aside, I know I like to flick Jackson a ton of crap. I'm probably one of those guys. It's like he either is really excited to hear from me or he really doesn't want to hear from me for a couple weeks. I get that. I know I put a lot of pressure on both of you guys for that, but... Um, you know, pressure creates diamonds and you guys do such a great job. So from me here on the podcast side of things, I want to say thank you to Jackson Thompson and Sherry Vogler and open it up to you for any uh, last thoughts before we let you get out of here. I, I was going to point at you. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Marcus, usually I, you know, usually I'm like, I see Marcus's name come up on my phone and I'm like, oh shit, okay, what happened? I just, What's on I'm fire? I'm ready for right. shit to hit the fan and we got to figure something out. But you always do. And earlier, you know, you said a lot of nice things about Denny that I was going to bring to the table as well. Like, I love having Denny because I don't know if you can drive a truck, Marcus. One of the questions I thought of while you were asking me was like, Denny, what would it look like to teach Marcus how to drive? And is that something we should tuck away for a future episode too? A lot easier now because they're automatics and they got all the safety stuff on them. But you know, back in the day when you had to learn how to double clutch going up and down and when to downshift going up or down a mountain. And th- yeah, that's that's a challenge. But these Volvos are, they almost drive themselves. You know, Denny, I used to have a five speed Ford Focus and I would double clutch the hell out of that thing. Um, I never knew why. I just, I heard a guy say it in Fast and the Furious and I was like, hey, double clutching sounds cool. So I um, didn't know it served a purpose until I started working amongst truckers, but you know. I, I did drive a stick at one point in time in my life, so I don't know if that helps at all. I think what I just heard Denny say is, well, uh, even even a blind idiot could drive a Volvo because they pretty much drive themselves, so obviously I could teach Marcus. <laughs> just don't ask me to teach you to parallel park. If I had to okay. take the test again, I'd forget it. If they threw that on there, uh-uh. I'd, I don't know how many times I've driven by and went, nope, we'll stop at the next place because I can't parallel park. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me feel a little bit better about it. Uh, Sherry, any final thoughts for you before we let you get back to work? Um, you know, I just really want to thank you guys. I don't think that the drivers on the podcast actually realize how much work it takes from all of you to get this podcast out there. Marcus, you spent all this time posting. Danny, you are just a phenomenal asset to the podcast. Seriously, like, I love having you on there. You know, Haley, all the work that you put into it, uh, same with Mike, you know, it, it's a lot of work for everybody, but we love it. We enjoy it. I mean, I do. Um, Jackson for hounding me every morning, standing at my desk, telling me what to do. So, you know, really just thank you to all of you. I think that, you know, it goes underappreciated, everything that everybody does. Well, thank you. We really appreciate that. And I will say uh, a quick thank you to Jackson. A lot of the times he's bugging you, it's for me. And that's so you and I can maintain our relationship, <laughs> Sherry. So yeah, that's, I, you know. I do uh, have a routine every morning. I usually come, I got my piping hot coffee and I sit next to Sherry's desk and all like whatever Marcus has. See, <laughs> you said all these nice, nice things in your final thoughts and I just came and shout on Marcus there for a few I really expected <laughs> more like people to shout on yep. me. I, 
I did. I expected more shat, to be honest with you guys, because I, I put a lot of pressure on you, and I never shut up. I get that about myself. So, uh, Haley, any final thoughts before we let you get back to the video editing room? Mm, yeah, just a quick, I you know, I see you, Mike, and Jackson all the time, but uh, Sherry, Denny, everybody at H&M, it's really fun to edit your all the you know podcast and the videos and everything you guys are really personable i feel like everyone in h&m is seems like such a very nice and very good person um and it's great it's great to work with you guys so keep doing what you're doing you guys are great well right back at you and uh you make it easy to do what we do same with mike uh our behind the scenes team here i would put them up against any behind the scenes team for any podcast or any production uh, that I've ever worked on or that I've ever seen in my life. And uh, I can't understate the importance. And Mike, I do want to give you a chance to say your piece before we let you go, brother. Nothing big and crazy. Just I lived a life of working retail and different jobs that weren't bringing me joy. And I'm finally doing truly what I love doing. And H&M and Bullog has given me the chance to do so. And I've never been happier. So you know what? Thanks to everybody that allows me to do it. And let's not stop <laughs> as lame as that sounds no no well said man and and i think that's another part too that i don't take enough time to appreciate is how much fun we actually get to have doing this for job. sure like it's it's never something I, I don't think about it because it's my life but uh hey uh it's a pretty special gig that we get to work here and uh you guys are all special and all a part of it and we appreciate that denny your last thoughts before we let you go um I don't know if this is possible, but I'll throw it out there to the drivers and maybe Sherry can help get the word out and to Haley, because I'd say it's going to add a little extra work to you. But I watch, I, I keep up with the podcast on YouTube myself, so I'm seeing the, the visual. And it would be so nice if maybe the drivers could get, if they're at the yard or maybe in a nice place and get somebody to take a picture of them with their truck behind them, maybe with the mountains in Utah or something. And that way, just instead of their name up there, we could have that picture and make that connection. I, I think that would add a nice touch. That'd be cool. Fantastic would, idea. I would love that. I would add to that too. Something I wanted to say, but I hadn't had the chance to is, you know, for all the H&M drivers out there and they're listening, thank you. You know, that is a huge part of how we get to do what we do. But also, uh, I would love to meet some of you. I know when I, I kind of check emails like, hey, you know, Eric King's in the office. That's one of the drivers I've gotten to meet. For drivers that haven't had the opportunity, I'd love to shake your hand. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Also, if you hate Marcus, I want to know about it. Like, tell me those things. But like Denny said, we want to feature some of the things you got. So if you're coming on and you have a pet, you know, we'd love to feature, you know, you're a furry friend. We want to show more of what you're about when you come on the podcast. And any way we can do to, to highlight things that you're going to want to listen to or, or things that we did that you hate, like, come and tell us. Like, we want to hear about it. Well, and if you're looking for Jackson when he's in the office there because you want to go meet him, just hang a left at the Lollipop Guild and pass the Gumdrop Forest and right down there down the yellow brick road, you'll find him at the end of the hall. He's the one wearing uh, Heelys. <laughs> He'll be the only I'm one on that. wheels. I want you to wear this door. I'm past you. I'm wearing with my pumpkin. Yeah. That's day number. Oh, you guys, thank you so much. Denny Stone, Mike Martin, Haley Moreland, Jackson Thompson, and Sherry Vogler. Really appreciate your guys' time here. Uh, you know what? I don't even want to do an outro for this because this is already so long. So how about on three, we get one good Stay Fresh cheese bags from everybody at the same time, all right? Let's do it on three. One, two, three. Stay, Stay Fresh, fresh cheese, cheese Bags. bags. That's what I'm talking about. Stay fresh, cheese bags. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to the H&M Trucking Podcast. Please leave a review, subscribe, and connect with Marcus over at the H&M Trucking social media channels. And if you're considering a job at H&M, find us at hmtrucking.com. Until next time, stay safe and ahead of the curve drivers.